All right, I believe we are ready to go here. We are going to start tonight in John chapter number 13. John chapter number 13 to get us started here tonight. As we consider another promise of the scripture. And um, John chapter 13, if you're not familiar with uh, the gospel of John, um, Jesus here begins, the last part of chapter 13, Jesus begins his final discourse here with his disciples um, the first part of chapter 13 um, is the, the Feast of the Passover, is, uh, is, is what's going on here, is kind of the context here. So let's just read through this, uh, this passage here, and um, then we'll pick up some notes here as, uh, as, we, uh, as we go along. Right, John chapter 13, beginning in verse number 2. The Bible says, The supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then came he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands, my head. And Jesus said unto him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him, therefore he said, Ye are not all clean. Uh, so after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments, he was set down again and had said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, so, also ought ye ought, so, so ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. I speak not of, uh, of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the Scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before, before it come that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am He. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the truth of your word. And we thank you for um, this portion of scripture where you give us an example to live by. And I pray again, Lord, that you'd give us wisdom as we consider these, these truths here from your word. And um, Lord, as we follow after you, I pray that our, our heart would be turned toward you and that our desire would be to follow after you in all things. Lord, we love you tonight. We look forward to what you have in store for us. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So here we are. After washing the disciples' feet, Jesus said that it had been done that he had done all of those things as an example for us to follow. So the word example um, means an exhibit for imitation. Um, that's what it means to be an example, to set an example, right? It's something that you look at and then you imitate. And so Jesus was teaching us that we should copy his servant's spirit, not the literal action of, of washing feet necessarily, but certainly to take on a servant's heart, a servant's attitude, a servant's spirit. And, uh, and it's been well said, you don't know if you have a servant's spirit until you are treated like a servant. That will tell you how much of a servant's spirit you have. So, um, so he went on to say that we would be happy if we would do those things that he's commanded us and uh, that he set out as an example. So there is a difference between knowing that we need to be a servant and then actually being a servant, serving 
someone else, serving one another. Jesus not only taught us to be servants, he also showed us how to be servants. Um, And so foot washing, something that was common in those days, was a very common activity, but still a very humbling thing to do. I don't know about you. I don't want to wash anybody's feet, right? Um, and, uh, we might, we we might have just have a, a foot washing ceremony, all right? So, um, but there's, um, and some people do believe that this is an ordinance. That as Jesus did this, he set it up as an ordinance um, for the church for hereafter, and and. Um, there are some churches that, that practice foot washing yep, uh, for this purpose, which of course is, is fine. Oh, Jake, where, what? He never came in here. <laughs> he wasn't here. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, there are some, some groups and some churches that actually practice, the, that actually practice foot washing. As as uh, as Jesus did here, um, but uh, you know, uh, it's certainly something that we could Emulate. we could learn a lot from. All right, so uh, so here's our story to be told here tonight. After um, so this is the Last Supper. So Jesus ate his last. What kind of meal is this? Passover. Yeah, so this is Passover. Here with the disciple, the disciples. Correct. Right. Yeah, it is extremely significant that this is taking place uh, during at this specific time during the Passover, and uh, Jesus having his Passover meal here with the disciples, and um, so also something that jumps out to me is in verse number two um, the dinner's over supper's over and Judas takes off and uh, Jesus knows that the father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and went to God so Jesus at this point particularly knows his where he's going and what is about to take place everything that is about to occur and, um, and so it's even after this that they go out and, uh, and Jesus, Jesus prays in the garden. So it's still after these things. But, um, but he knows. He knows what's about to happen. And he is, and even knowing, and I think that's an important phrase to put into, into this because he knows he is, he knows who he is. He knows his role he knows he is the Messiah. He knows he is the Creator. He's the one 13 chapters ago in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He is that Word, and He knows full well. He is sent from God, and He is going to return to God. He could, if He, was, if he had any ounce of pride like me, or you, perhaps... He would have said, I don't, I ain't doing nothing. I ain't touching your old stanky feet. I don't need to do that. If anything, y'all, are, y'all ought to be privileged enough to be in my company. Why don't y'all wash my feet? But Jesus takes the opportunity here not only to, um, to teach, which we'll see in a minute, but also to demonstrate what it means to be a true servant doesn't matter your position uh, and your, um, I don't know, clout status, I guess, doesn't matter. Here's the king of all creation teaching us, be humble and serve others. Find a need and fill it. Be humble? Yeah. 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 Uh. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so then obviously Jesus prepared himself with a towel and then began washing their feet. Yeah, simple part of the story here. Peter, though, what did Peter do? Oh, absolutely. He contested this act 
of servanthood by Jesus. No, 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 no master of mine, no teacher of mine is going to start washing my feet. Uh, that is until Jesus told him, well, if, if I don't wash you, you're not going to have any part with me. And then Peter, uh, and of course, if you know Peter, Peter, Peter's, Peter's a track star, you know. He is all in. Whatever way he's facing, he's all in. Well, you're not washing my feet. You're not touching my feet. My feet are stinky. Lord, you don't want to, no, no master of mine, no teacher of mine is going to teach. Well, I, you won't have any part with me. Oh, not just my feet. Wash my hands. Wash my head. I'm all in. Dunk me under, Jesus. I'm ready to go. Wash me up. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold, 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 hold. Pump the brakes, boss. Uh, calm down. All right? And this is actually very important as well. Um, because it's, it's reiterating for us, sometimes we don't need to be completely washed again. You only need to be washed one time, um, spiritually speaking. Um, Jesus said, no, you're, you're already clean. You just you need to wash the dirt off your feet a little bit. What does he mean? I, had, I remember very distinctly in junior high, a Bible teacher working through this passage uh, with me. You're walking in the world. As you walk in the world, you're going to pick up some of the dirt of the world on your feet. Doesn't mean you need to be saved again. Doesn't mean you need to be cleansed again. You just need to keep your feet clean. Just keep your feet clean. I think that's very significant for us as well. Um, to, to allow God to do this, uh, to allow Jesus to do this work of just keeping us clean. Maintenance, you know, so. Um, after washing their feet, verses 11 through 15, after washing their feet, what, did, what does Jesus begin to do here? Yeah, he was teaching them. And, uh, and so there's actually some very important topics here that we'll look at uh, in just a few minutes. And then Jesus, of course, made reference a couple of different times to Judas. Betraying. Yeah, to Judas betraying him and so Jesus knows uh, what is about to take place. Jesus knows uh, the source of this, and um, and so he mentions it here a couple times. And so he says, "Here, you're not all clean. Um, so you are clean, just to, but but is clean every whit." End of verse ten. Jesus said, "He that is washed needeth not but to sa- need, needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit." And ye are clean, but not all. So it's in this entire group here, y'all, y'all are all saved. Well, not all of you. Side eye over to Judas, <laughs> right? And, uh, and so, he, uh, so, so Jesus makes reference here a few different times to this betrayal as it is, uh, as, as it is taking place. That, um, that Judas, he mentions here in verse number two, that um, that. Judas is already in this frame of mind. He's already given over to this uh, to this greed and desire to have Jesus uh, betrayed for some silver. All right. So then, let's look at some lessons that we need to. Okay, calm down. Lessons to learn. All right. Why would Jesus wash their feet? Now we we looked at this and we kind of mentioned this. Right here's the King of Creation humbling himself to wash his creature, his creation's feet. Um, Why would Jesus do that? Well, he begins to teach some things throughout this passage here. And so first and probably most obvious for us, Jesus is teaching a lesson on on humility, right? Verses 4 and 5 here. Um, He gets up, girds himself with the towel, he, uh, he pours the water and he begins wiping, uh, washing their feet, wiping that, the wiping their feet with that towel. And so this is it's a lesson here in humility. And uh, you remember what Paul, as he wrote back to the church at Philippi, um, noted about the utter about this incredible humility that Jesus puts on display for us. What does Paul say in uh, in Philippians two five? <clears throat> right. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of 
no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men, being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And so this, Paul, even picking up here on Jesus' teaching, not just giving us the example, also teaching us this is the kind of humility you should display as well, Paul writes back to the church at, at Philippi, we need to have this mindset. We, not, we, should, we should not think of ourselves too highly, right? No matter what our position is, no matter what our status, status is, we are still servants. And, uh, and so we should, we, should act, um, we should act accordingly. All right, secondly... Jesus taught a lesson on, oh yeah, absolutely, serving. Verses 13 and 14, you call me master and Lord, and essentially he says, and you're right, I am your master and I am your Lord. If then I, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. And so you should, talk, you should serve others as well. What's that? Yeah. Yeah, John 13. So referring back to the text there. Um, so, so Jesus here teaching a lesson on being a servant in Matthew chapter 20, verses 26 through 28. But it, but it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your, your minister. Yeah. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your Servant, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. A uh, very succinct um, uh, description here of what John says in, in uh, chapter 13. So, uh, again, teaching this, this same thing. And if I'm not mistaken, this is when the disciples asked, Who's going who's gonna to sit next to you in the kingdom? Uh, who's your right hand man going to be? And uh, Jesus reminds them, listen, whoever is going to be great is going to be a servant. That's the greatest, is the one who serves. All right. Um, Jesus also here teaching a lesson on? Yes, love, absolutely. Verse number one, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour has come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Jesus demonstrating and teaching um, us his love. Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says, You've heard it, it have been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate that enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you and do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use and persecute you. And, uh, and so Jesus here, of course, John notes this in this, this first verse of this chapter, that he loved his own that were here. And he didn't want to leave them. They had drawn so close together uh, as a group and, um, and in their relationship. And he didn't really want it to be, didn't really want to be over. didn't really want it to end. And, um, and so, uh, so thus, thus a very difficult decision here. And Jesus takes the final opportunity here to demonstrate his uh, servant's spirit. All right. Uh, letter D, Jesus is teaching a lesson on? Yeah, on cleansing. Uh, verses 6 through 11, he's washing their feet. And, uh, and of course, this is the interaction here with, uh, with Simon Peter. And Jesus does desire for us to, to, to be clean and to stay clean, right? Ephesians 5, uh, verse 25, Husbands, love your wives, wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. And so Jesus teaching us that cleanliness is important, particularly spiritually, right? Spiritual cleanliness, um, being clean from, being cleansed from the worldly dust that we pick up just because we are in the world. 
and uh, it has a, it has its effect on us, and uh, and so we just got to stay clean and and stay close to him. Jesus here teaching a lesson, also teaching a lesson on, yeah, on Satan. Um, verse number two. Supper being ended, the devil now having put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Verses 10 and 11, Jesus noting that not everybody here is completely clean and uh, mentions it twice here. You're not all completely clean. Reminder for us where he says, be sober in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, uh, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And uh, so, so Jesus teaching us a lesson here um, on Satan as well. So, uh, and then Jesus finally teaching a lesson on, happiness. most definitely, a, a lesson on happiness. If you do these things, you know them. Happy are ye if you do them. We know we ought to be servants, but the true uh, happiness, the true joy comes from actually serving others. And uh, Acts 20, verse number 35, I've showed you all things how, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it's more blessed to give than to receive. And uh, so these, uh, these, um, these lessons here that Jesus teaches his disciples also for us in, um, in our everyday uh, in our everyday lives, as we strive to be more like Jesus, um, we should have, these, uh, have this mentality, have this attitude. We're just going to serve others. We're just going to have a servant's heart just as our Savior did. All right? Everybody caught up thus far? Very good. We continue on then to some principles that we can apply. So God promises... God promises us that there are things that we can and that we should copy about Him. He is our example, and we should strive to be like Him. We cannot call ourselves Christian without being Christ-like. Yeah? Uh, just like we naturally take on characteristics of our earthly parents and our, our, our physical parents, a child of God should naturally desire to take on the traits of our Heavenly Father. And uh, so here are some specific traits that we are to take on, and, uh, and in so doing, we follow His example. For example, His... Mercy is is mercy. Oh, you didn't look him up. That's well. Then that's the problem. <laughs> oh, very good. You're going after his fruit, right? <laughs> well, I'll give you a clue. There, they are not in alphabetical order either. So, and if you guess love, um, you'll be you'll get the, you'll get it eventually. All right. So, um, but Jesus, his mercy. Uh, he tells us to copy him in Luke 6, verse 36. Be therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. And we should seek to be like Jesus in this way. Be merciful um, as, uh, as much as we can. Uh, now this one, Mike, I don't, I don't think you're going to guess love on this one. Ephesians 4, verse 32, he demonstrates his forgiveness, <laughs> forgiveness right. She's already done? You're already done with the paper? No. Oh, you're excused. Oh, turn it in for grading and you'll be excused from class. Okay, all right. So, um, uh, his forgiveness. Yeah, Ephesians 4, verse 32. Be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. And, uh, and, and God's forgiveness for us, by the way, includes all of those things. Kindness, tenderheartedness, and forgiveness. And, uh, and so he ex exemplifies his forgiveness and expects us to do likewise. Uh, thirdly, his... Holiness. Hey, good job, Mike. His holiness. <laughs> First. No cheating. No cheating. <laughs> oh, goodness. 
his holiness. 1 Peter 1, 16. Because it is written, be ye holy. Why? For I am holy. Um, yeah, absolutely. His, his holiness we ought to seek after. Um, fourthly, letter D, his... Yeah, his perfectness. Matthew 5, verse number 48. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Um, does that mean sinless? No. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, does he ask us to be? Yeah. <laughs> Ben's got it. I don't know what everybody else's problem is, right? Does God expect us to be perfect? Yeah, yes, He does. Uh, but there's a lot more involved in that than just saying, okay, then let's all just be perfect tomorrow. Right? Right? What do we need? He knows we need help. He knows we need help. But it certainly ought to motivate us. To, uh, to do better, well, right? That's something I can work on. To draw closer. There you go. Something you can work on. Um, okay, very good. I'll leave that one alone. Okay, so... <laughs> okay, so this next one's love, I know that. Yeah. The next one is love? Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. It has to be, because the last one is his uh, uh, servant's heart. <laughs> it's his yeah. love. His love. Anytime you go into First John chapter 4... Um, right? Uh, that's, that's, you're going to be talking about love, right? Beloved, let us love one another. Love is of God. Everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. In, that he, in this was manifested the love of God toward us. So here's the example part that God gives to us, right? He manifested it for us. Because God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. And there's the perfectness part. We live through Him. Here in His love, not that we loved God, but that, his love, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. And his love is perfected in us. All right. That's a, that is a deep, deep passage. Right? Yeah. Um, in this particular topic of discussion, we can ignore the $5 word um, because we have what, we're, what we've been talking about all night, right? We have the example and then God sets the example up for us. This is the act of Him sending His Son is the manifestation of this example that we have, giving everything for love, um, for love, loving for love for our love for one another, demonstrating God's love uh, through our own actions and in our own lives. If God so loved us, so we ought also to love one another. And, uh, and so, which is... Which is why I tell everybody often, I love you. I love you guys, man. I love you guys. Oh. All right, and then finally his servant's heart. Yeah, which of course we, go, we reference right back to our text uh, tonight in John chapter 13. Verse 15, for I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. And of course, as, as noted, some people take this literally to mean we should wash others' feet. We take it not so literally as that was a cultural, that was a cultural uh, example of the day. Uh, we should have a cultural example of our day as well. What does it mean to uh, demonstrate this kind of servant's spirit and servant's heart, we would probably relate it more closer to like cleaning the toilets or, or you know, something like that. Um, so, right. It's... Uh, yeah, probably the one, same one that washed all the feet, you know, cleaned all the, cleans, cleans all the toilets. 
you know, things, things like that. Gets on their hands and knees and scrubs the bathroom floor. Uh, you know, whatever that job is disgusting, it, you're going to have to have a servant's heart to do that. Yeah. And that's really the, uh, the, the, in my estimation and study, that is what the, um, what is being taught here. We don't have record at all of the New Testament church after this practicing foot washing um, for any uh, for any length of for anything outside of the cultural norm, right? I, I imagine that they had somebody wash people's feet as they come in because it was the first century, right? And that's what they did, right? That's what they did. Um, but we don't have any. They we don't have any record of a church practicing this with one another. And so, so it stands to reason then that Jesus intends for us to um, to to take on this servant's heart. Not for the sake of keeping everybody's feet clean, but for the sake of practicing something that is very humbling and takes requires a servant's heart to do and to do well and to do it without without griping and complaining and um, and things like that. We do have a memory verse for today. It's First Peter chapter two verse twenty one. Uh, for therefore hereunto ye were were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow. His steps. So, if Christ suffered for us, we certainly could suffer a little bit for Him, and uh, and that's that's what Peter is talking about here in First Peter two. Um, but but more to the point, He left us the example of how to live and uh, and what that life ought to look like. So we should follow in His uh, in His steps. Amen. Very good. Anybody have any, uh, any, any other thoughts, final thoughts, questions, or uh, maybe not comments? Maybe but there's something I was reading and studying about when the cup was on in Gethsemane. I really think it's the cup of the crucifixion. And what it really amounts to when he's in that cup was separation from the Father and being made sin. Right. Right. Yep. So, yeah, and this he did for our sakes, right? So, very good. All right, let's have a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed. Lord, again, thank you so much uh, for allowing us to be here tonight, for gathering us here together, for allowing us these few moments, Lord, just to fellowship around your word and study your word together. Lord, I pray that you would take these truths, Lord, that you would etch them into our hearts and that we would honor you and please you and that we would seek to follow after you and, uh, and, and love you and imitate you as best as we can. Lord, we love you tonight. We pray as we leave from here that you'd take us home safely, bring us back again for our next appointed time. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.